Welcome to this Ukraine war update. Let's dive right in and look at the map. Ukraine has been conducting its offense in mainly in three directions. So let's dive in real quick. First, first let's go to the Bakhmut area. On the eastern front in the Donetsk area, Ukraine, as you can see, has been conducting an offensive along the flanks of the Russian uh, occupied city of Bakhmut. Um, mainly Ukraine has been pushing on the north side and also on the south side and they have recorded some gains uh, uh, in this area on the south so their push as you can see is mainly through this area to try to gain, get, gain the hold of the city to cut off the Russians that are occupying Bakhmut. So this is the main effort on the eastern front. Okay so let's dive out and let's look into uh, there's not too much happening in other fronts here in the east. Okay. And then uh, this area, Ukraine has been also in the Zaporizhia area. So they have been trying to push to this uh, town called Wol Wobotteni. Uh, and also in this uh, city called L L Lukv uh, Lukv. Uh, so basically Ukraine has, been, has gained a foothold here and they've been pushing a little bit south into the next uh, settlement south of it. So this is the area that in the past you have seen that Ukraine lost quite a bit of equipment trying to go through the minefields and uh, lost quite a few leopards so Ukraine has still been conducting some offense but it's uh, but the effort is not as strong as it is in this area because if you if you look in this area let me pause it real quick okay so as in, in this map so I think Russia has a line of defense like this and they have another line of defense here I think around this city there's defense here and then there's another line of defense and the smaller little segments of defense everywhere. So in order for Ukraine to go do a head-on attack toward this direction, uh, let me change the color real quick. Okay, let's just leave it. Okay, in order for Ukraine to gain a head-on attack toward this direction, they would have to go through a lot of barriers of uh, Russian defense. And also in this area, there's some degree of defense here and there. So Ukraine definitely would have to go through like that to all these defense. So there's a so the main fortification, let me zoom out real quick. So in this area, basically around this cauldron here, uh, this area, is a lot of Russian defense that are geared toward protecting a Melitopol. Um, so basically a lot of the, transp the transports, if you know that um, the way Russia is transporting their goods is from here up to here, comes down to uh, uh, Burnetsk and then goes out to Mariupol and also through here also. So basically this is the transportation hub to a degree like this. Okay, so Russia has a lot of fortifications uh, in these areas to try to, f to try to fortify their positions uh, so that Ukraine would not be easily able to break through. And then, uh, of course, if Ukraine wants to break through, um, you know, that's their gateway to Crimea, right? So basically, Russia is trying to prevent that by building up layers and layers of defense in that area. Okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper. And uh, so this is a point number three of attack. So point number number two and the point number three of attack where Ukraine had 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 the most success, if you have seen. So in the beginning, uh, let me just change the color right here to blue. Okay, so Ukraine represents blue. Okay, so Ukraine had gained these settlements here, these these settlements. Okay, actually from the here. So Ukraine was able to push and gain these settlements and also able to kind of clear out the flanks a little bit. And um, so what it did was when they when they started pushing against these cities, what it caused is caused Russians to slowly retreat. OK, so they're occupying currently right now. Uh, Russia is occupying this city here. OK, and they have very strong fortifications. So Ukraine has been trying to push against it, push against it. But then they were not able to break through. And also they but Ukraine actually had a little bit of success going through the south outside of the city. So if Ukraine is able to even um, come and take this city here, uh, this one should fall. Okay, this city, you, you know, Russia should normally retreat. So Ukraine may not even have to fight the battle in this city. So Ukraine is kind of doing some, um, uh, from what we have gathered, 
Uh, so they're trying to do some counter offensive from the side to, uh, I think they may have gained even this pocket. And then, um, so if they gain this city, uh, all the supplies, so this city supplies, this, these, these two cities, these two cities right here and this one, supply a lot of these smaller settlements to all of these smaller settlements to the side. So you can, Ukraine is able to cut the city off. A lot of these settlements would naturally start to slowly decay because of the loss of supply. So therefore, Ukraine has a big advantage in trying to gain the city, but it's not easy because the fortifications are quite strong. So they're trying to go around it and then trying to look for a different ideas to try to flank and gain the city. And I think if they can um, maybe come, come this way, uh, to cut off, uh, cut off, uh, you know, the, the one, the Russians that are holding up in the here, uh, they would have definitely a, a great success. You can see, I think in with the, some of the artillery fire, they were able to drive a lot of the Russians out of this area. So anyway, just wanted to show you a little bit of that. And, um, okay. And I'm going to jump to a little bit of, um, news. Okay. So this is based on the, uh, the Institute of War. Um, so it says that the Russian president and then, is saying that um, so the progress of the Ukrainian Ukrainian offensive. Okay, so here is what Putin started. He said, this is his thought. He says, okay, let me highlight this real quick. So he's saying he's saying that the progress of the counteroffensive and signal that believe he believes that Russia can outlast. He said Russia can outlast the support of the West. Okay, so that that means you you know Putin is not not letting down. He's gonna try to he's trying to outlast Ukraine in this uh, offensive. Uh, so you know he still has a lot of equipment and a lot of manpower that he is willing to push into the battlefield. So uh, Putin is not gonna back down in this in this. So we'll see uh, based on the battlefield maps that Ukraine Ukraine can slowly grind grind down the Russians, right? Grind down the Russians. And knock out this uh, first line of defense, um, you know, and also in this area, in this particular area, I believe uh, I believe Russia only has um, maybe one strong line of defense and maybe some smaller lines. But if Ukraine can bust through like like bust, bust through the front line, they should be able to to uh, in, encounter and, and take the other areas quite uh, a lot easier uh, than going through the other areas in Zaporizhia. So you see this area, like I mentioned, that this area is very well fortified. So, but if Ukraine can do something like this, where they can break through the defense like this, and they come around the backside, you know, then a lot of these, a lot of these front flanks uh, should be easily taken. Okay, a lot, a lot easier than they go straight on uh, going through the minefields, uh, the barricades, and everything. So I believe the backside once Ukraine breaks through, uh, once Ukraine breaks through this first layer of defense here, uh, only one line. But over here, there's multiple lines. Okay, so it's very hard to break through here, but a lot easier to break through here. So this is maybe the tactic of Ukraine is to try to see if they can get some foothold here. And then uh, claim the offensive and move to that direction. So, all right. And then uh, one last thing here is that Putin indicates that he's um, he's willing to announce a second wave of mobilization. So you know he might go all in and announce another round. So a lot of Russians have died already. A lot of Russians have been injured. And then fifty thousand, they said, Wagner Wagner group have were, were either casualties or have died. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of different things that are going on. So, um, and also, is it Putin aimed to uh, wipe? Okay, so I think a lot of drone strikes and the border securities, a lot of different things that Putin is kind of facing. Um, and also, Pogosian, uh, one of the uh, uh, top uh, Wagner Group guys, has uh, also been fighting against uh, all his top generals. So, basically, there's a lot of things going on in Russia. So it's also to the advantage of Ukraine that there's a lot of conflicts going on. So Putin might do two things, right? He might try to outlast, continue buying weapons uh, from other countries such as China and Iran and building out those equipments to try to outlast the West, the supply of the West, as Ukraine doesn't have the infrastructure to, con to build out as much uh, equipment as Russia. And they depend heavily on the Western uh, supplies. And then also he might, he might do um, mobilization. 
So this is the status of the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. So, okay. So I hope you like this update. Give me your, uh, give me a, your comments and your thoughts on this. And then uh, give me a like and follow me uh, for more updates on the Ukraine offensive. Thank you for uh, watching. We hope you have a wonderful day.